Good morning and welcome to all of you. Uh, I'm really glad you're here today. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a special topic today, Rastafarian. Rastafarianism or Rastafari movement or Rasta, uh, lots by different names. Uh, the reason is we have the Roots Reggae of Music Roots Reggae and the World Music Festival in Boonville, California this coming uh, weekend. So it's uh, put on by Epiphany Artists, and they're pleased to announce the lineup for Sierra Nevada World Music Festival June 16th through the 18th this year, 2013. And it'll be at the Mendocino County Fairgrounds in Boonville, California. And that's at 95415 is the zip code. And uh, a lot of the information that's here is from 2014, when I did this sermon the last time. And then it was the 26th Summer Solstice and World Peace Celebration. Uh, but no, this year is the 26th. Last time was the 19th, I think. But the, after a four-year hiatus due to the pandemic and the death of their founder and programmer, Warren Smith, the SNWMF team follows Warren's path and stays true to the roots. So the SNWMF stands for Sierra Nevada World Music Festival. Uh, and it'll be in our Boonville Fairgrounds. Has about 10,000 visitors we get in a little downtown Boonville here. Um, and that will be in June 16th through 18th. So we're going to do two sermons. This one, which is the hist history of Rasta and the gr grounding and foundation of it and who the players and terminology special language and everything. We're going to look at that today. And then next Sunday, um, we will be doing um, How That Looks, Rasta and the Bible will be the title of it. So, but it's a three-day music and camping festival featuring the best in reggae and world music uh, at our fairgrounds in Boonville. And it is an unusual thing today because today I get to say, you can close your Bibles. <laughs> I just had to say that. Never. Well, I did once before when I did this in 2014, and maybe I will never do it again. So, but today we're going to look at the Rastafari movement, and next Sunday is a biblical look at Rastafari or Rasta. So this is our flag without the Spanish subtitles there. Uh, the flag of Ethiopia, which is a prominent force on Rasta and Rastafari. And so I presented this as a PowerPoint in 2014. So you want to double check the dates. I tried my best to make sure everything was up to date, but I didn't proofread it all. Um, so you want to recheck it. And you can go to snwmf.com. And or the Anderson Valley, uh, Mendocino County Apple Fair and Show, they probably have it on there also, and that'd be .com. Uh, and my two original PowerPoints, without the, without the pleasure of my voice reading it to you, but if you, you're more than welcome to download the PowerPoints off slideshare.net, and D. Couyers is my handle, and Rastafarianism dash Jesus dash and dash the dash Bible dash SS. Or if you just go to slideshare.net and put D. Couyers in, or even my whole name, it'll probably get you there and then search for Rasta. New York Times, way back when, wrote this is dedicated to the notion of conscious music which its organizers define as music with a message of peace, unity, and brotherhood. The Sierra Nevada World Music Festival might be a balm of sorts for music fans in need of an optimism boost. And that was in 2011. Um, 2014, they said that the Sierra Nevada 
features three days of the best in roots, reggae, and world music taking place on two stages with a late-night Jamaican-style dance hall. In addition to more than three dozen bands, and I put down the 19th annual Summer Solstice and World Peace Celebration, also includes an extensive schedule of children's and cultural activities, arts and crafts, an international food court, family and uh, alterable camping, and vendors galore. With beautiful streaming colors and exotic aromas, the Festival Village is an attractive marketplace of food and craft booths created by the collective efforts of artists, vendors, staff, volunteers, and ticket buyers uh, that has something to offer children of all ages. So you have to bear with me. I'm no expert on the Rastafari movement. Like I say, it's been um, eight years ago since I did study this seriously, and they've been absent from our valley for quite a while. So, But I studied it briefly back then, a little more now. Previously, we had set up booths and interacted with 50 to 100 members of the Rasta movement. I say, brace yourself. This is a big event. Up to about 10,000 people attending. When the three-day ticket is about $160, that translates into at least $1.6 million. And so it has a big impact on the valley, and uh, it is a blessing to our fairgrounds as well, I might add. So much of this presentation is quoted from www.religionfacts.com, and you can look up Rasta there. Uh, and I might add also that I've only been to Jamaica once and I have no desire to return. However, Duns River Falls is a truly outstanding national park treasure of Jamaica. It offers 600 feet of climbing pressure with thousands of visitors and local each year. And it is something to behold. Uh, they actually allow you to go swimming and, and skidding and climbing all over the, the rocks. And the rocks are all smoothed off and worn. And uh, it's just a very neat place to be. Of course, the rocks are slippery. So everybody holds hands and tries to brace each other as we're coming and going. And if you get to Jamaica, you will certainly end up at, Jam at Dun River Falls and enjoy yourself. Uh, but I digress. <laughs> so back to the Rasta movement itself. Rastafari and other Abrahamic faiths. Some Rastafari choose to classify their movement as Ethiopian Orthodox Christianity, Protestant Christianity, or Judaism. Rastafari typically hold that Standard Bible translations of the Bible incorporate changes or were edited for the benefit of the power structure, and the one common idea is that half of the Bible story has never been told. Of course, that disagrees with what Jesus said when he said that not one yacht or one tittle would all be taken away from the Word until all these things come true. And now that we've found first century copies of scripture and also the Dead Sea Scrolls that precede scriptures by hundreds of years, um, new, precede the New Testament, you know, that clearly is not the case, but it's a common refrain from lots of groups. So they say half the Bible story has never been told, and they consider Jesus and all the uh, apostles and disciples to have been um, dreadlocked and black dark skin colored, so. So Rasta, Rastafarians are monotheists and they worship the god Yah. And that uh, comes right out of the Psalms. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. Psalm 68, verse 31. Rastafari are monotheists worshiping a singular god who they call Yah or Jah. Jah is the term in the King James Version uh, of the Bible in Psalm 68, verse 4. Rasta see Jah or Yah as being in the form of the Holy Trinity. Rasta say that Yah is the form of the Holy Spirit incarnate. 
he lives within the human. Uh, for this reason, they often refer to themselves as I and I. Furthermore, I and I is used instead of we, and is used in this way to emphasize the equality between all people and the belief that the Holy Spirit within all people makes them essentially one and the same. And that's from Wikipedia. So Psalm 68, verse 4 in the KJV says, Sing unto God, sing praises to his name, extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, and rejoice before him. So this is Strong's uh, number 3050, and it's usually pronounced Yah, and, but it's the word, the basis for what we get Jehovah or Yehovah in the shortened form. But this is the, the very short form of Jehovah, if you would. The proper name of the one true God, it's used in many compound names, beginning with the letters J-E, and that would be a transliteration of the Hebrew, names ending with Aya or Ja. Uh, it's a contraction with 30 verse 60, 68 and meaning the same. Um, and so it only appears in this form in the King James Version and a few others I'll show you in six, Psalm 68 verse 4. So the KJV, his, his name is Jah or Yah. New King James has Yah. Uh, uh, new NIV uh, family has <coughs> his name is the Lord, all caps, the unspoken name, the Tetragrammaton, the transliterated by the Jews as uh, Adonai or Hashem or one of them. Net Bible also has all caps Lord. Young's Literal has Jah uh, in his name. So the KJV has it all caps. Young's Literal has a capital J. The Net's Bible has the Lord is his name. And that would be the Adonai version of it. Um, NAS, NAU have the Lord Jehovah is his name, or Lord, all caps. And uh, New Jerusalem Bible has Yahweh. Uh, Spanish Bible has Yah also, like the KJV. So much of this presentation is what I downloaded from religionfacts.com. And I'm, I didn't get all of the quote marks up on it, and I didn't do that. But uh, very little of this is original with me. Almost all of it comes from religionfacts.com, Wikipedia, or several other sources. So they say, the Rastafarian movement is a messianic religio-political movement that began in the Jamaican slums in the 1920s and 30s. The most famous Rastafari is Bob Marley, a musician, whose reggae music gained the Jamaican movement international recognition. There is significant variation within the Rastafari movement and no formal, org no formal organization. Some Rastafarians see Rasta more as a way of life than a religion. But uniting the diverse movement is a belief that the divinity and or messiahship of the Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie I, the influence of Jamaican culture, resistance of oppression, and pride in African heritage. The Rastar, Rastafarian lifestyle usually includes the ritual use of marijuana, avoidance of alcohol, the wearing of one's hair in dreadlocks, and vegetarianism. Uh, Acts 10 verse 13 is quoted. Um, the date they were founded is generally said to be November 2nd of 1930, the year that Emperor Haile Selassie I, uh, who was born in 1892 and died in 1975, was crowned, but based in the movement of the 1920s. The uh, place founded was in Jamaica. The founder was Marcus Garvey, uh, who died in 1940, a black Jamaican who taught in the 1920s and is considered a second John the Baptist. Uh, adherents number about one million worldwide. 
followers of the Rastafarian movement are known as Rastafarians, Rastafari, Rastas, or Rastafarians. The movement is named for Ras Tafari Makanan, Makanan, which was crowned emperor, who crowned Emperor Haile Selassie the first of Ethiopia in 1930. Rastafaris disliked the term Rastafarianism. Let me interrupt them a minute. Uh, and I do apologize for my title, but I probably won't change it because this presentation isn't necessarily addressed to Rasta. It's addressed to the broader worldwide uh, audience. But anyway, back to their quote. Rastafarianism, because they reject the isms and schisms that characterize oppressive and corrupt white society. The movement is referred to as the Rastafari movement, Rasta or Rastafari. Rastafari developed in the slums of Kingston, Jamaica in the 1920s and 30s in an environment of great poverty, depression, racism, and class discrimination. The Rasta message of black pride, freedom from oppression, the hope of return to the African homeland was gratefully received. The Rastafari movement began with the teachings of Marcus Garvey, uh, who was born in 1887 and died in 1940, a black Jamaican who led a Back to Africa movement. He taught that Africans are the true Israelites uh, and have been exiled to Jamaica and other parts of the world as divine punishment. So there's Marcus Garvey um, and uh, more slides from religionfacts.com. So there's a more current picture of him. And look to Africa for there a king will be crowned. I'm going to show you this. It's a prophecy he gave. So Garvey encouraged pride in being black and worked to reverse the mindset of the inferiority that centuries of enslavement had ingrained in the minds of blacks. Harvey is regarded as the second John the Baptist, famously prophesied in 1927, quote, Look to Africa, for there a king shall be crowned, close quote. On November 2nd, 1930, Rastafari Makomen was crowned emperor of Ethiopia, and he ruled until 1974. At his coronation, he took the name Hali Selassie, meaning Might of the Trinity. Selassie also took the titles Conquering Lion of the Tribe of Judah, Elect of God, and King of the Kings of Ethiopia. These title are, titles are traditionally given to Ethiopian kings and reflect the Old Testament emphasis of Ethiopian Christianity. For Rastafarians, Selassie's coronation was a clear fulfillment of Revelation uh, chapter 5, verse 5, and Ezekiel 28, verse 25, and Marcy, Marcus Garvey's prophecy. I'm going to show you those two verses. Uh, Revelation 5.5 5 says, And one of the elders said to me, Stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome so as to open the book and its seven seals. And Ezekiel 28 verse 25 says, Thus says the Lord God, When I gather the house of Israel from the peoples among whom they are scattered and will manifest my holiness in them in the sight of the nations when they will give, live in their land which I gave to my servant Jacob. <coughs> uh, they consider Messiah Selassie as God or Jah on earth. Followers of Garvey's teachings believe that Selassie is the Messiah that had been predicted and that his coronation indicated the divine punishment was completed and the return to Africa would begin. Rastafari's named their movement for Ras Tafari and regarded the emperor as the physical presence of God or Jah 
on earth. Marcus Garvey himself, however, did not think highly of Selassie. He regarded him as an incompetent leader and in collusion with the white oppressors after his defeat by the Italians and acceptance of British assistance to regain his throne. In 1937, Garvey wrote an editorial entitled The Failure of Haile Selassie as Emperor. Quote, as an emperor, Haile Selassie worked to modernize Ethiopia and to steer it into the mainstream of African politics. He brought Ethiopia into the League of Nations and the United Nations and made Addis Ababa the major center of the Organization of African Unity. Selassie was named Time of Magazine's Person of the Year for 1935 and was the first black person to appear on the cover in 1930. He was the only black leader recognized by the rulers of Europe. So there's a picture of him, Time Magazine's Person of the Year in 1935. Emperor Haile Selassie the I on the cover of Time Magazine in November 30, 1930. The Rastafarian movement first became visible in Jamaica in the 1930s, when peaceful communities were founded in the Kingston slums. During this time, the Rastafarians developed a distinctive tile, style of language, hairstyle, art, and music. Leonard Howell emerged as an early leader of the movement. He taught six fundamental Rastafarian principles. Number one, hatred for the white race. Number two, the complete superiority of the black race. Number three, revenge on whites for their wickedness. Number four, the negation, persecution, and humiliation of the government and legal bodies of Jamaica. Number five, preparation to go back to Africa. And number six, acknowledging Emperor Haile Selassie as a supreme being and only ruler of black people. Many of these principles were subsequently abandoned as the Rastafari movement developed. And there's a picture of Leonard Howell, the early leader of the movement. And he was born in 1898 and died in 1981. And this quote here says, Hatred and revenge on the whites, the, the negation, persecution, and humiliation of the government and legal bodies, and the raising up of the blacks was his rallying cry. Um, he was turned to be a light bringer uh, and the first Rasta. And I don't know what this is. Stephisdope.com. So I don't. I should have gone to that website, but I didn't. Or I got it off there. I forget now. Howell was arrested by the Jamaican government in 1933 for his loyalty to the Ethiopian emperor over King George V. It was a British Commonwealth at that time. This may have contributed to the decision to keep Rastafarian leadership leaderless and independent. Haile Selassie met with Rasta elders in Addis Abada in the 1950s. In 1955, he offered 500 acres of his personal land to black people wishing to return to Africa. Around 2,200 blacks mainly Rastafarians, moved to the land in Shashemi during the 1960s. But poverty, a lack of acceptance by the Ethiopian population, and disputes with the government that overthrew Selassie has caused the population to dwindle. The current population is estimated at 250. A major event in Rastafarian history was Haile Selassie's visit to Jamaica, in April 21st of 1966, Rita Marley, Bob Marley's wife, converted to the Rastafari faith after seeing Haile Selassie. She said she saw stigmata appear on him and was instantly convinced of his divinity. Further evidence of his divinity was seen in the fact that a serious drought ended with rain upon his arrival. So there's a picture of Rita Marley, Bob Marley's wife. 
Um, he told the Rastafarians that they should not seek to immigrate to Ethiopia until they had liberated the people of Jamaica, a command that came to be known as liberation before repatriation, as well as the profound religion's significance for Rastas, the event helped to legitimatize the movement. In April 21st is celebrated as a Rastafarian holiday. Selassie was deposed in 1974 in a military coup and kept under house arrest until he was apparently killed by his captors in 1975. Many Rastas believe that his death was a hoax and that he lives on in hiding until, until the Day of Judgment. Others say that he lives on through individual Rastafarians. Uh, the Rastafarian Bible, quote, the Rastafarian text for Rastafarian, the te sacred text for Rastafarians is the Holy Pigby, uh, the black man's Bible. It was compiled by Robert uh, Athelai Rogers of An An Anguilla from 1913 to 1917 and published in 1924. Uh, the Holy Pigby is a version of the Christian Bible that has been altered to remove all the deliberate distortions that are believed to have been made by white leaders during its translation into English. The Ethiopian national epic, the Kebra Nagast, is also respected by Rastas, but less so than the Bible. Rastafarians believe in the Judeo-Christian God, whom they call Jah or Yah. In general, Rastafarian beliefs are based in Judaism and Christianity, with an emphasis on Old Testament laws and prophecies and the Book of Revelation. Allegorical meaning is often sought in the Holy Pig Bee. <coughs> Jah was manifested on earth as Jesus, who Rastas believe was black and also Emperor Haile Selassie. Selassie is referred to as His Imperial Majesty, or H-I-M, and that's pronounced Him, and believed to still be alive. His death was a hoax, and he lives in protection, awaiting the Day of Judgment. Selassie is worshipped as divine. Scriptural proof texts include Revelation 5, 2-5, Revelation 17, 14, 19, 6, and 22, 16. And Ezekiel 30, Psalm 9, 18, 68, 76, 87, verse 4, and Isaiah 9. Rastafaris also honor Old Testament prophets like Moses and Elijah. Rastafarians do not believe in an afterlife but instead to look to Africa, called Zion, as a heaven on earth. True Rastas are believed to be immortal, both physically and spiritually, a concept called ever-living. An important Rastafarian concept is I and I, which is said instead of you and I. It emphasizes the oneness between humanity and God as well as the equality of all humans. Another central concept is Babylon, which refers to the white power structure of Europe and the Americas. Rastas seek to resist Babylon, which once cruelly enslaved blacks and still continues to hold them down through poverty, illiteracy, inequality, and trickery. The greed and conceit of Babylon is contrasted with the humble simplicity and naturalness of the Rastas, close quote. Rastafarians are perhaps best known for their religious use of marijuana, which grows plentifully in Jamaica. Rastas know it as ganja, the holy herb, ilki or kali, and believe it is given by God. Scriptural support is found especially in Psalm 104, verse 14, quote, he causeth the grass for the cattle and the herb for the service of man. Close quote. Other texts interpreted to refer to cannabis include 
Genesis 3, 18, Exodus 10, verse 12, and Proverbs 15, verse 17. In addition to ritual use, Rastas also use marijuana for medical purposes, applying it to a variety of ailments, including colds. Marijuana is primarily used during the two main Rastafari rituals, called reasonings and neyabinji. The reasoning is an informal gathering at which a small group of Rastas smoke ganja and engage in discussion. The ritual begins when one person lights the pipe, or chalice, and recites a short prayer while all the other participants bow their heads. The pipe is then passed around the circle until all of the people have smoked. The reasoning ends when the participants depart it one by one. The Nayabinji, or Binji for short, is a dance held on Rasta holidays and special occasions. See below. These dances can last for several days and bring together hundreds of Rastafarians from all over Jamaica. They camp in tents on land owned by the host Rastas. Formal dancing takes place at night in a tabernacle especially set up for the occasion. The Rastas sing and dance until the early hours of the morning. In the daytime, they rest and reason. There are several Rasta holidays, most of which center around events in the life of Emperor Haile Selassie. The most important celebrations are November 2nd, the coronation of Selassie, January 6th, ceremonial birthday of Selassie, April 21st, Selassie's visit to Jamaica, July 23rd, Selassie's personal birthday, August 1st, emancipation from slavery, August 17th, Marcus Garvey's birthday. So they're primarily famous for their dreadlocks. And I'm not sure I couldn't proofread the translation into Spanish there. I hope that's it, but it has to do with the hair. And I forget the Spanish word for hair. Uh, and my PowerPoint slides that you'll download from slideshare.net, D. Couillers, uh, won't have the Spanish, only here on the YouTube presentation. So the Rastafarian dreadlocks, one of the most visible practices of Rastafarians is the wearing of one's hair in dreadlocks. Dreadlocks have several purposes and layers of meaning for Rastafarians, including the biblical command, biblical command to not to cut one's hair, Leviticus 21 verse 5. The appearance of the lion's mane, representing strength in Africa, Ethiopia, and the lion of the Judah, uh, naturalness and simplicity which are associated with Africa. The Rasta's roots are in Africa. Again, the Ethiopian flag. So Rastafarian colors and symbols of Rastafari. The other main Rasta symbol besides dreadlocks are the colors of red, gold, and green. Red stands for the triumphant church of the Rastas, as well as the blood of the martyrs in the black struggle for liberation. Gold represents the wealth of this their African homeland, and green symbolizes Ethiopia's beauty and lush vegetation. Black is also included, representing the color of the Africans. Another important symbol is the Lion of Judah, which represents Haile Selassie as King of Kings, Africa, and Strength. Their most observant Rastas follow a dietary law called Ital. Ital is food which is completely natural not canned and free from chemicals and pres preservations, preservatives, and eaten as raw as possible. Old Testament prohibitions against pork and shellfish are part of it all. Most Rastafarians are vegetarians or vegans. Coffee and milk are also rejected as unnatural. Rastafarians reject the use of alcohol since it is a fermented chemical 
that does not belong in the temple of the body, and it makes a person stupid, thereby playing into the hands of white leaders. This is contrasted with the holy herb of marijuana, which is natural and believed by Rastas to open their mind and assist in reasonings. The sect or orders of Rastafari. There are three main sects or orders of Rastafari today. All agree on the basic principles of the divine status of Haile Selassie and the importance of black images of divinity. Many Rastafari do not belong to any sect, and the movement as a whole is loosely defined and organized. The Naya Binji order, also known as the Theocratic Priesthood and Lividity order, or Naya Binji, is named for Queen Naya Binji of Uganda, who fought against colonialists in the 19th century. This is the oldest of the orders and it focuses mainly on Haile Selassie, Ethiopia, and the eventual return to Africa. It is overseen by an assembly of elders. Bobo Shanti was founded by Prince Emmanuel Charles Edwards in Jamaica in the 1950s. Bobo means black and Shanti refers to the Ashanti tribe in Ghana, from which this sect believes Jamaican slaves were descended. Members of Bobo Shanti are also known as Bopo Dreads, Bopo, Bo, Bobo Dreads. In belief, Bobo Dreads are distinguished by their worship of Prince Emmanuel, in addition to Haile Selassie, as a reincarnation of Christ and embodiment of Jah. Their emphasis on the return to Africa, repatriation, and their demands for monetary reimbursement for slavery. Members of the Bobo Shanti order wear long robes and tightly wrapped turbans around their heads. They adhere closely to the Jewish law, including the observance of the Shabbat from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday and hygiene laws for menstruating women. They live separately from Jamaican society and other Rastafarians growing their own produce and selling straw hats and brooms. They often carry brooms with them to symbolize their cleanliness. Um, the 12 Tribes of Israel sect was founded in 1968 by Dr. Vernon Prophet Gad Carrington. It is the most liberal of the Rastafarian orders, and members are free to worship in a church of their choosing. Each member of this sect belongs to one of the 12 tribes or houses, which is determined by birth month and is represented by a color. Acceptance of the God incarnate status of Jesus is Rastafari doctrine, as is the notion of the corruption of the teachings by, by secular Western society, figularly referred to as Babylon. For this reason, they believe it was prophesied in the book of Revelation, and I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel, that Jesus would return with a new name that would be inscribed on the foreheads of 144,000 of his most devoted servants. And that's from Wikipedia. Also Wikipedia, Rastas hold that they represent their fulfillment based on their experience in the light of Haile Selassie's return and coronation as the King of Kings on 2nd of November, 1930, whom they see as the second coming of Jesus or the coming of the Holy Spirit and therefore Josh, Jah, onto the earth. Thus the great Messiah King, whom the Jews are still waiting for, has indeed now returned to earth, according to the Rastas. Rastas say that Jesus was black, while Western society, or Babylon, has commonly depicted him as white for centuries. The 18th century Ethiopian icon of Jesus this image is from a church in Rome and dates from about A.D. 530. Uh, it's worth remembering that 
Uh, Jesus was not an American. He wasn't a European. He was a Jew. He wasn't from Africa either. He was a Jew. And so consequently, he didn't have white skin. He didn't have black skin. He had the Middle Eastern complexion that Jews in Israel at the time had. Continuing on, uh, this is, uh, the, again, that 18th century depiction of a black Jesus. So, in conclusion, can I get an amen on that? I know I've overwhelmed you with data today. Uh, and I kind of apologize for that. But it's necessary that we get grounded in what this religious movement uh, is based on and what they teach and what they practice. So in conclusion, here's some secondary biblical points that I wanted to touch on. The Rastafarian lifestyle usually includes trial use, ritual use of marijuana, avoidance of alcohol, the wearing of one's hair and dreadlocks, and vegetarianism. Babylon refers to the white power structure of Europe and the Americas. True Rastas are believed to be immortal, both physically and spiritually, a concept called ever the ever-living. Excuse me. Bobo Shanti order adhere closely to the Jewish law, including the observance of the Sabbath from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. Uh, a dietary law called Ital, Old Testament prohibitions against pork and shellfish are part of Ital. And another important symbol is the Lion of Judah, which represents Haile Selassie as King of Kings, Africa, and strength. Reggae music, this uh, messianic religio-political movement, began in the Jamaican slums in uh, 1920s to 30s. Emperor Haile Selassie was crowned in 1930. Some see Rasta more as a way of life than a religion. The influence of Jamaican culture is another important factor and resistance of opposition and pride in African heritage are some of the key points. Secondary points would be biblical points are the Rastafarian lifestyle usually includes a useful ritual use of marijuana, avoidance of alcohol, wearing of one's hair and dreadlocks, and vegetarianism. Natural food, not canned and free of chemicals and preservative, as eaten as raw as possible. Another central concept is Babylon, which re refers to the uh, white power structure of Europe and the Americas. Rastas seek to resist Babylon which once cruelly enslaved blacks. Messiah Haile Selassie, God, Jah on earth, the Messiahship of your Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie. Bobo Dreads are distinguished by their worship of Prince Emmanuel, in addition to Haile Selassie, as a reincarnation of Christ and an embodiment of Jah. So what is the gospel? True Rostals are believed to be immortal, both physically and spiritually, a concept called ever-living. Uh, so that's a kind of a different gospel. <laughs> so that's Rastafari. Amen? I say to our congregation, let's get ready for the Sierra Nevada World Music Festival. Uh, and then uh, please watch on YouTube or come and attend if you're in the area next week when I do a biblical response to Rastafari and we compare it to what the Bible says. So that is our presentation for today and I thank you for your attention. And again, I'm Pastor Dave Couyers of Country Bible Church and there's my link for slideshare.net forward slash D is in David, K-O-O-Y-E-R-S. And my, my website is still down, but and my new website address for YouTube is there. So uh, thank you for your attention and hope to see you back next week.